Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Psycho, and I've got another Walking Dead video for you all today. This one is actually going to be a review of Season 6, Episode 14, titled Twice as Far. Now, I just want to say that the beginning of this episode was very strange and dreamlike. We saw these scenes that would repeat over and over, and then we would see one scene that would change throughout this repeating process. For example, we saw Morgan building the jail cell, and in his mind, Morgan is thinking about the big bad guy known as Negan. And the reason he is building this is because we can expect that in his mind, he is thinking that somehow he can convince Rick to take this guy captive rather than kill him, simply because that is his philosophy, he believes that all people can change and that all life is precious. Then it moves on to Daryl and Carol where it shows Daryl getting his bike back and he takes out of the pocket Dwight's little figure that he carved out of wood and Carol walks over there and asks what's going on and that she finally realized he got his bike and he talks about Dwight and the people and he says that he should have killed him and reflecting back later on with this episode he definitely confirms that idea and Carol realizes that he was saying the truth. It was sort of like a beginning foreshadowing to the end of this episode to where it shows that this is going to come back and bite there on the ass. After that, we got the repeating process of, I think it was Olivia, putting food and stocking the shelves with that. I don't really understand every single thing, but we saw Father Gabriel walking through, and then at the end we realized why it was doing all of this, and I'll assess that and analyze it later on in this review. We then see Spencer Monroe and Rosita, and Rosita's basically, you can tell that she is unhappy with this relationship, and that it looks more to me as if it is a rebound, just something to distract her feelings while she is going through all of this stuff. Spencer walks up to Rosita and basically says, I'm going to try and cook something tonight, do you want to join me in the meal? And, and at first she's a little, you know, on the edge about it, and then Denise overhears the conversation and pretends that she doesn't, and then she tells Spencer that she will. After that, we see Denise looking at a map, I think I remember that correctly, and it shows in the background a zombie sort of stuck on a pike. The spear is basically going through the car, and it is stuck in the cheekbone of the zombie, and I thought that was really good. The effects were really great on that. And then in the distance, it's something that you might have missed the first time. You can see Eugene and Abraham walking off together. And this shows that they are making their journey out on their little run they have. Moving back over to Daryl and Carol's conversation, where he says he should have killed that guy, and Carol basically gets that confirmation where she's looking back on what she has done, and she feels a little better about what she's done, simply because Daryl says he wishes he would have killed that person, and it sort of comforts Carol because she realizes, I'm not this only person, I'm not this monster, I do what needs to be done. We then see Denise come to Daryl and Rosita about her plan to go to the apothecary and get some of the medicine that the Alexandrians might need in the future. Of course, we see Daryl and Rosita brush her off because we all know that she is an Alexandrian and she doesn't really know how to defend herself that well. Even when compared to the other Alexandrians who actually know how to fight a little bit, Denise is on the very low tier of that. She is mostly useful as a doctor and they don't want to endanger her simply because of all of the things that she can do to help other people in that place. She finally basically tells them that she's going to do it either way, and if they choose to come with her, so be it, and if they don't, so be it as well. So they have no choice because they don't want Denise to encounter something she can't overcome and die, so they go and help her. We then see them driving on the road with a pickup truck, and Daryl is having trouble braking. It was something along the lines of that, and she explains to him what his problem could be, and she tells him that she knows what she's talking about because her brother taught her. And that was one of the first moments that we really got any background on Denise, because we have been spending a lot of time on these major characters, and finally we get a little background with Denise, and the fact that she brings up her brother also brings up the idea of what happened to her brother, because she is alone now. You can tell throughout this whole run that Denise is definitely dealing with these problems, and she sees Daryl as a brother, just like she mentioned later on in the episode. It almost seems as if she's going on this run to prove to herself that she can survive. We transition back over to Eugene and Abraham, and they're walking along, and they have a bunch of funny lines. We have the two funniest characters on the show, and they just keep trading back all of these lines. And Eugene talks to Abraham about how he is on this second level. He has now graduated from this total coward to someone who knows that he needs to do certain things to survive, and he can now do them. We also see a huge transition and change that many people might not have noticed, and this is where Eugene actually puts his mullet into a ponytail, and this basically symbolizes the idea of change within Eugene, he is now putting his hair in a ponytail as a symbolization of this change. 
We see Abraham sort of brush off Eugene's attempts to explain how he is now developed and talking about adapting as a person. And we can basically understand the point where Abraham states, Eugene, you are not as good as you think you are at this. I think Eugene is stepping a little far over the edge there, and he can't really handle himself as he thinks he can right now. We transition back over to Daryl, Rosita, and Denise, and this is the point where they decide either to take the train tracks or to go through the other route on the road. When I see that Daryl chose not to take the train tracks, I immediately got the reference. For example, they followed along the train tracks to Terminus, to where they met Joe and all of the claimers, and they encountered all of those problems, and then finally once they got past those train tracks, they kept following the tracks until they finally got to Terminus, and as we know, Terminus did not turn out well for them either. So I can really understand why Daryl wouldn't want to choose this again. It's one of these things that could just present a little bad luck in Daryl's mind. This is where we get the episode title, Twice As Far, simply because Rosita says, taking your way is going to be twice as far as taking the train tracks. And I love this because I always like finding out why they named these episodes these certain ways. Moving on to Eugene and Abraham, we get to the final spot to where they finally find the ammunition factory and where Eugene reveals his plan to Abraham about how he plans to create bullets, we are running low on supplies, and Hilltop is completely out. So this is basically going to be the coin of this next world. Money is going to be worthless, and the ways that you can save your lives are going to be worth a lot more. And that is why ammunition is going to become so important in trade and survival itself. Abraham gives Eugene a lot of props on this idea, because we all know Abraham is military trained and he understands why ammunition can be important to a community. This is the key moment where we see Abraham starting to respect Eugene, but he still doesn't respect him in a way that he can physically survive on his own. Eugene sees the walker coming in, and what I think it looks like was maybe it was a little melted metal on its head, and that's why he couldn't slice it with the machete. I'm not sure I don't watch the episodes in HD, but that's what it looked like to me, and if that's true, that was a really, really interesting moment. I love how Eugene called dibs on it and Abraham's like, well, dibs is dibs. And then we see Eugene struggle with the walker until Abraham finally helps him out. And that's where they argue. And Eugene demands an apology from Abraham and basically says he doesn't need him anymore. And this is where it finally hits Abraham. And he's like, well, you know what? I've protected you all your life and you're still ungrateful for what I've done to you. And he finally leaves him on his own. And I definitely agreed with Abraham simply because Eugene is extremely ungrateful when it comes to these things sometimes. At this moment, I honestly could not stand Eugene because of what Abraham has done for him and how he is being so ungrateful. But if you think about it, this is sort of similar to what Abraham did to Rosita. He said, I don't need you anymore. I thought you were the only person in the world. Now Eugene is realizing that Abraham is not the only person in the world and that he can defend himself. So it's sort of like a circle. It's coming back around to Abraham, but I was still angry at Eugene for saying that. I also started to become worried of Abraham going home on his self. We then transition back over to Daryl's group, and they go into the apothecary and they get all of the medicine, which was a good idea. That's what I would have done. Instead of just grabbing certain ones, I would have gotten them all. That's just a smart thing, to have every single type of medicine that you would possibly need. And then we see that Denise is starting to explore on her own, and that started to make me nervous as well, because we don't know who is in that building. She goes into the room, and we see the zombie with a broken arm, and then she looks at the sink, and we see all of this blood, and we also see the baby. Baby shoe. And that was really, really great imagery in my opinion because I love it when they don't outright show something, but they go around it in a way that it delivers more impact than it might would have initially. It's simply the idea that you think this walker could have eaten a baby, and that is very gruesome to think about. We also see that she had grabbed one of the name keychains off of that little stand they had there, and it said Dennis. And this was her brother, and we can see throughout the episode, Daryl is reminding her of her brother, and she is thinking about this and becoming sad over what has happened to her brother. They get out there, and this time Daryl decides to take the train tracks. They go along the train tracks, and Denise sees a cooler in the car. Now, now, this is one of these things where she takes a huge risk for something small, but she knows why she's doing it. She wants to live her life, and if she doesn't live her life, why is she even alive? I also love how she told Daryl and the rest of the group to stop when she wanted to kill the walker, and I think this was her first walker kill, which was extremely awesome. She got that closure before her death. We also see the example of the Law of Averages that was talked about in the Next World, Episode 12. And this is where she finds the Orange Crush Can in the cooler, and we realize this is what she was looking for. 
we get her very cool speech that really reminded me of Herschel back in Season 3 and Season 4, where she says, Do you know why I did this? And then she reveals the things that some of us didn't catch on to. And she relates it back to her brother, and then she also tells Rosita, I brought you here because you're alone, and you remind me of myself, but I also see that you're very strong, and this gives me an idea that I can become very strong as well. We see her continue this speech, and it becomes so unexpected out of the blue when the arrow comes through, simply because because it was in mid-speech just like they did with the RPG. I love how they do it because you don't expect it. And it was at this moment where it really did shock me. It really did. It also reminded me of the Beth death. Daryl had that same look when Beth died as he did when Denise was shot through the eye. We then see the saviors all surround Daryl's group and we see Dwight come out. And this is where we're simply thinking, you asshole, Daryl saved you and you were paying by doing this? We also see his burned face, and with this we can assume that he has gone through a radical change, simply because the last time Daryl talked to Dwight, he says that he hasn't killed anyone because it would change him. And now we have seen that he's gone through a huge change in which he has actually killed someone, and we see his burned face, which might have contributed to that, if we're talking in brief terms. After that, we see Eugene come out, and I'm thinking, how are you going to screw us over once again, Eugene? Dwight says that Daryl is going to take them back to Alexandria, and they are going to take whatever they want and kill whoever they want. He then talks about what the saviors do by saying that we kill someone, and then we give you the option to choose. I also think that Dwight looks extremely similar to the actor known as Christian Bell. If you don't know who that is, definitely look him up. I think some people will agree as well, because they are very similar looking in my opinion. When I saw Abraham in behind the barrels, I was really hoping for this clutch moment where he was going to save them, and then we get the moment where Eugene is like, the guy that really deserves to die is the one behind the barrels, and at this moment, I became extremely angry. I wanted Eugene to die at that moment in all honesty because at that moment it seemed as if he was being a coward and ratting someone else out in the idea that he may be let go if he gives that away. However, later on in the episode it is confirmed that he did not mean it that way. We'll go into detail with that in just a second. I got extremely hyped when I saw that Eugene wasn't going to be a complete coward when I saw that he took his moment and whatever that moment gave him, he did it. And I definitely give him props on that. He did what he had to do. Even though he had to bite some guy's wiener off, he did what he needed to do. As Abraham would say, you didn't have to bite a dick. We then see all of our main group go into survivalist mode, Daryl slitting throats, Abraham shooting people, and we get that war of the saviors and the Alexandrians once again that is just so awesome to see. I was honestly thinking, holy crap, we have another action-packed episode. This is just ramping up to a monstrosity of insaneness. Dwight's group finally gets away with some saviors, and then Daryl lets everything sink in. They take back Eugene, and then they get Denise. One thing that I do want to mention that could come back to bite the Alexandrians in the ass is when Denise stated that we killed the saviors. There's one moment around the time where she goes to the cooler where she says we killed those saviors, something along the lines of that, and we do know that the saviors were watching them at that moment or they wouldn't have been able to kill her. So now we know that Dwight and their group knows that we killed those saviors on the road and and possibly they know that we kill the saviors at the satellite facility too. This definitely adds more danger to the group simply because they are not going to be happy about us killing 30 to 50 people. They finally go back and we get that confirmation of Eugene saying, I did not do that to rat you out, I didn't want you to die, I did it to take my moment. And then we get Abraham's apology and, and that was just so awesome to see. We get a little bromance moment where he's like, yeah bro, I got you. He basically says that and it was just cool to see them trade back and forth with these compliments on each other. In the end we get a huge surprise where Carol announces that she is leaving, she can't handle this life of killing anymore. And that was so surprising to me because she even admitted that Daryl had a point when he said he should have killed Dwight. So to me it seems as if Carol would have that confirmation that she is doing the right thing, but instead she goes in a completely different direction that surprises me. She takes on the mindset of Morgan. We finally see why the intro of this episode was so strange, and that is because the intro was actually the outro. It moves to the point where Sasha is looking over the gate, and then the camera moves to the point of where all of these cars are lined up, the RV, and it looks as if our group is about to go attack the saviors. Carol's situation also reminds me of Merle when he leaves the people at the prison, and I don't know whether Carol is just going to say, I can't do this anymore, or if she's going to go and try and kill all of these saviors, and it really interests me because I don't know which direction this could take. 
I really do appreciate you all watching. We are so close to 10,000 subscribers, and it means so much to me. Thanks again, guys. Peace out.